Yes, 651 Linton Boulevard. There is no west or east. Post office confirmed that. And then here I'll, I'll highlight stuff, see, that I want to pay attention to. For some reason or other. There aren't too many comments in this one. Diane, is it streaming? We work on it. Okay, we're ready. Chair, I believe we're ready to begin with the <coughs> case. Hang on. I'd like to call to order the Board of Adjustment meeting for June, June 15th, 2023. Will the Secretary please call the roll? Mike Miles. Here. Jesse Slosser. Here. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan. Here. Vlad Dumitrescu. Here. Robert Cohen. Here. Are there any changes from any board members to the agenda? Do we need to do the elections first before? No. Uh, this, it's fine if they want to do the motion to approve the agenda first. There are no Someone changes. Someone move to approve the agenda as prepared? <coughs> move to approve the agenda as prepared. Second. Next item on the agenda is no, the Chair, <coughs> we actually need a roll call from Ms. Miller first. Ah, okay. Mike Mills? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Well, the next item on the agenda is the election of two officers, the vice chair and the second vice chair. Do we have any nominations? I would take second vice if you want. So, uh, chair, I know um, typically I, I would usually run the election because we don't have a chair yet, but since we do, um, what we would normally do in the process is you just ask if there's any nominations and we'll do them one at a time. So any nominations for vice chair? We'll need a nomination and then a second, and then if there's any additional nominations, and if not, we do a roll call at that point. I assume I can't nominate, somebody else has to nominate? Uh, unless you want to pass the gavel, correct? No. no. As long as somebody knows their names, otherwise, I'll pass, pass the gavel over here. You ask for nominations. So, do I, do, I nominate? You? No, just say, are there any nominations? Okay, are there any nominations? I nominate Mike Mills for vice chair. Sure. Is there a second? I second it. Great. Are there any other nominations? Are there any nominations? Okay, Diane, can you do a roll call for um, board member Miles for vice chair? Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Yeah. Any other nomination? We, do we want to? Well, if the chair would like his gavel back, you yeah, can. Okay. Um, <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, do we should we wait? Do we need? But, to no, any. Wait? So we just roll right into any nominations for second vice chair. Okay, so uh, Vlad has nominated Brenda for second vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Great. Are there any other nominations for second vice chair? Great. Diane, roll call, please. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. <clears throat> Are there any comments from the public for any non-agenda mm -hmm. items? We have um, minutes to approve. For the November 2nd. Third, third correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Chair. November 3rd meeting. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me pull those up. Bear with me a second. Oh. 
<clears throat> I had some trouble with this. All right. Um, does everyone have a, a copy or have anyone access the copy of the November 3rd? Can we make sure that the mics are lower so we can hear? Thanks. Testing, is that better? Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, stress. Uh, Vlad mentions we were the only people that were here for that meeting. However, I've raised this question before, and I'm told it doesn't matter that a board member was not at the oh, meeting. Mike. Yeah, I was there. Uh, Mike, uh, for, uh, for which well, the uh, minutes were read, they can still vote on it. Correct. There's. I can't remember if it's an attorney general opinion or an ethics opinion, but I, there is an opinion that indicates that a board member has a duty to vote um, as a member of the board. And presumably, uh, the videos are available online, so a board member w should or would have had access to watch the meeting and confirm the minutes. So uh, we start with if there's any changes to the minutes, and if there are none, then um, a motion with a second and a roll call just like normal. Uh, so I'm asking, does anyone on the board have any comments or changes to these minutes or corrections to these minutes? No. No. Someone want to make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? I make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Second. All right. Roll call for the vote, please. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. And Chair, the agenda normally has uh, in parens here, I believe, with the swearing in. So we can go ahead and have Diane swear in. Um, anybody that plans to speak before we do public comment, please. Okay. You know, if you think you're going to speak, please get sworn in. Please raise your right hand by the authority vesting me the notary of the state of Florida. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Bear with me a minute while I pull up my draft of the quasi-judicial rules, because I don't have it on paper here this morning. Uh, while you're doing that, Chair, we can actually ask for public comment for non-agenda items. This was the item of number that we mentioned before uh, on comment from the public for non-agenda items. <clears throat> there, were, there were three items on the agenda for tonight, three cases. So if, you know, this will be only if you want to talk about something else, you have three minutes to talk about something not on the agenda. This hearing may be conduct shall be conducted in accordance with the city of the Delray Beach quasi judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city commission, board member, staff, and applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not nor may a decision be made on the, based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. We'll proceed to item one on the agenda. <clears throat> This is case number 2023-032 for uh, 61 Linton Boulevard, consideration of a variance request from Land Development Regulation LDR 4.3.4.K 
to reduce the required 10-foot perimeter setback to a 5-foot perimeter setback and to allow a reduction of the 20, required 25% non-vehicular open space to 22.8%. Thank you, Alexi Howell, Senior Planner. I'd like to enter the record file number 2023-032, and Jason Weber, the applicant, is here today. Excuse me, one, one minute. Don't we have to say if we have anything to do with I was just about to ask the chair to, yeah, to ask for ex parte, yeah. please. Does anyone on the board have any ex parte communications to report with regard to this case, 2023-032, the firehouse? I actually do. I, I, I've been... Um, in the past, there was a previous FAR, and I participated. Um, I participated in it through the company that I work for, REG Architects, and that was never materialized. But I'm familiar with the the site. So, just to clarify, you've had no involvement with the current application that's Absolutely pending. Absolutely none. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Proceed. All right, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Madam Second Vice Chair. Uh, Jason Weber with Kimley Horn, address 1615 South Congress Avenue, Suite 201, Delray Beach, Florida, 33445. Uh, and on behalf of uh, the city of Delray Beach, as the applicant for tonight's project, uh, fire station number 113, which is over on the north side of Linton Boulevard, We've got members of our team here, Isaac Covner representing the city of Delray Beach. He's the project manager on the project, Gulf Building, the design build contractor, myself uh, from Kimley Horn and PGAL, the architects. Uh, just a little brief uh, project location information, it's fire station number 113. It's over on the north side of Linton Boulevard, uh, just west of the Five Guys and MD Now. Uh, the address is 651 West Linton Boulevard. Site is just under an acre, especially after a right-of-way donation that's required. The current use is a fire station, um, and then the future land use designation is community facilities, and the zoning district is also community facilities. There's no overlay district for this property. Uh, just a little bit of history, there is an existing fire station on this site. Uh, it's one story, about 6,400 square feet. It's currently three bay with sleeping for four only right now. And uh, the operations right now, there's only one drive-through bay that you can get from the back of the site and drive through the apparatus bay uh, and out the front. So other engines for the other two doors actually have to back in, which is an unsafe operation on Linton Boulevard. There's some significant issues with the building integrity, structural, uh, and several other items, and is actually demolished within the last few months in anticipation of this project moving forward. The proposed project is a two-story, 10,535 square foot, three-bay fire station, uh, sleeping for 12, which is excellent and a significant upgrade. All three bays are drive-through from the rear. Uh, all concrete paving, there's guest and ADA parking in front, and then secure parking all around the back. The current previously existing site was unsecured for all the parking area. Um, and it's going to be designed, it is designed for a category five hurricane, and there'll be a new mast arm signal to replace the existing span wire signal. Uh, just a, a, for color, there's a nice architectural rendering of uh, what the ar architect has planned for the, the visualization of the fire station. And tonight's variance request, we're here for two, uh, as mentioned by the chair, one being the perimeter setback and the other being the non-vehicular open space or the maximum lot coverage as well. Uh, both of those coming from the development standards matrix for community facilities. So perimeter setback, I, I highlighted a couple of key items here. Uh, the perimeter setback is required to be 10 feet, but a couple of uh, key items here, the perimeter setback is not only a building, uh, but it's also no paving allowed unless it's generally perpendicular to the property line. So we'll look at uh, the site plan in relation to that. In addition, when it's adjacent to residential zoning, it is either increased to 15 feet or there's a, a wall or other decorative fencing installed for aesthetic and buffer purposes. Uh, so we're going to go to the next slide. Uh, as mentioned, um, we're required 10 feet on the east and west sides, and we're providing five feet right now on both sides. The east side, uh, 
the perimeter wall is north of that northeast corner of the building so that takes care of the, the requirement for that portion there's a five foot setback right now to the building along the building property uh, portion of the, the property line and then there's a six foot setback to the paving on the south side where the apron is coming out the front of the the drive and then on the uh, the west side the west property line there's a five foot setback to just the paving of that drive aisle that comes in um, and then once we get to that point where the perimeter wall is north that takes care of the rest of that area and why is this necessary uh, the site design required this the, these setback reductions for the fire station to function as you can see on the existing survey the original building was a lot smaller uh, generally smaller footprint and then the function of the site wasn't adequate for how to get fire engines quickly in and out of the station uh, the property is pretty narrow right now it's 150 feet wide so just making the the building work as well as the site circulation the required widths of drive aisles things like that um, we couldn't uh, narrow the building anymore uh, or the site anymore to take another 10 feet out of the width of the site in addition it's similar to the existing setbacks the the site is generally uh, mirrored a little bit so the building was pushed more towards the west and that was a 10 foot setback to just the building on that side um, and then the east side had a five foot setback to the existing paving the second uh, request tonight is for lot coverage and non-vehicular open space. And we work closely with staff, uh, both planning and landscape on this item, just to make sure we were uh, addressing it as appropriately as possible. And the development standards matrix has a minimum of 25% non-vehicular open space. Now, the, the city's code doesn't specify anything differently for open space other than just the blanket open space definition, which states that it must be natural plant communities and vegetated area. So it's not necessarily um, plazas and sidewalks, uh, which had been in incorporated in the past to non-vehicular open space or may be incorporated in other municipalities. So it's pure planted area on the site. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, I, as, as requested, uh, we're Redu reducing uh, requesting a reduction to 22.8 percent so we're about a uh, thousand square feet short 900,000 square feet short of what we need for that landscape area and we've shown all the landscaped areas um, on in green on this uh, diagram and we've worked extensively with staff to uh, try to minimize any paved areas but the the paved areas and the parking are absolutely necessary for circulation and for function of the fire station so uh, as, as mentioned before the these fire apparatus they're going to be coming in the left side the west side and driving around to the rear so they need a wide berth to make those turns for the fire uh, engines and then then coming in and then straight out the the front apron so the the aprons can't be narrower we looked at uh trying to reduce this and actually to get to the 22.8 percent we've made some modifications on the north side pulling the parking down further from previous mm -hmm. uh, the perimeter wall and landscaping uh, are all, all required as well and there's there's nothing extra on the site we've maintained the minimum amount of parking we need to have at minimum 14 spaces for the shifts the maximum shifts and shift change and then there's one ada space so you know we haven't put you know three extra spaces in there that we could easily take out I won't read through the, the findings for granting re relief. Uh, I, I can if you'd like, uh, but these are the, the requirements for, for that and generally summarize them in what we've talked about already tonight. And in summary, uh, we're requesting relief from LDR section 4.3.4K for perimeter setback on the east and west sides and the lot coverage or non-vehicular open space requirements as noted below reduction of the perimeter setback from 10 feet to 5 feet and a reduction of the non-vehicular open space from 25 percent to 22.8 percent both variances are necessary due to the function of the fire station uh, both design and operations too we've worked closely with fire rescue staff to ensure that we're doing the absolute best to meet the city's code requirements but also give them a, a functioning facility that's going to serve the city and its residents for the foreseeable future uh, literal interpretation would restrict the design of the site especially the perimeter setback uh, would cause you know reductions in the building size and functionality that would would render it not not feasible 
Um, and it also is, is compatible with the surroundings and was similar to what the original site was. And with that, I thank you and turn it over to Seth. Is, is there, this is, that it's kind of funny. Right. The city and the applicant uh, are, are, are kind of the same. So what, who, is there somebody representing, I take it, I would assume the previous presentation represented the applicant. Correct, Chair. So and now is there a city staff? Yes, to, planning to staff is ready to make a presentation, presentation as well. on the other side, okay. Yes, thank you. Um, Alexi Howell, senior planner. I'm going to hear, make a, a presentation on staff. Um, I'm going to make it brief because Jason did a really well uh, through job of making a presentation. So I don't want to repeat um, exactly what he said, but um, I'll get started. So the location is 651 West Linton Boulevard. It is zoned a uh, community facility with a land use of community facility. Um, it is uh, surrounded by a multifamily on the west side. You have general commercial to the right, which the MD now and the five guys. You have single family to the north and the Whole Foods to the south. Um, and there is a right of way dedication of seven foot, so the total lot size is uh, 40,320 square feet after that right of way dedication. Um, so the original building uh, was built in 1971 with a one story 6,430 square foot with three bays and housing four crew members. And uh, with the recent issues with the mold and the roof leaks, the building was demoed uh, recently in 2023. A little bit about the site, Jason did, did a well job explaining the existing site conditions. Um, as, you, as you can see to the diagram on the right, you see those arrows are for the three bays. Um, there are three small bays and then there was a driveway leading towards the rear of the, the parking lot and towards the back of the building um, for employees. And uh, the bays were only accessible for, one bay was only accessible towards the rear. So the function of the fire apparatus was to kind of pull up in front of West Linton and then back in. So that function wasn't really efficient and therefore a um, it was demolished and um, a new site plan is proposed today in front of, well, not in today in front of you, but a new site plan is proposed. Mm -hmm. um, and here's the site plan with the rendering in front. And so it's a two-story, 10,535 10, square foot um, fire station with three larger bays, a three-story stairway for training uh, towards the back, which is, um, we don't currently have one in the city, and uh, it will be able to house nine crew members, and it will uh, hold up a strength of five, uh, category five hurricane. So upon the review of the class five, um, it was determined that the proposal did not meet the, the open space requirement of 25% and the 10 foot perimeter that's required in the CF zoning district. And so today before you is the request for two variances to reduce the 10 foot perimeter set back to a five foot and to allow the reduction of the required 25% non-vehicular open space to 22.8%. Um, and um, let's see. So the, the reason is the, to accommodate the truck maneuvering towards the rear and the accommodate the standard fire station that you see today. Um, there's little left room to accommodate the 10 foot perimeter and um, therefore also not meeting the non-vehicular open space. So um, in order to meet the city's needs of the fire station, um, it really had to come down to reducing the five foot perimeter um, and uh, coming before this board today. Um, and so the board has uh, the criteria to, um, to make the following findings of section 2.47A, 5A through F. And um, these are the motions for you before you. And I can read it out loud if you'd like. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to make any comments as a public 
about this project? Does, e <laughs> Does either the applicant or the city have any cross-examination for the other presentation? No cross-examination. And Chair, just to be clear, rebuttal as well. Any rebuttal? No, sir. Okay. okay. Are there any comments or questions from the board? No. I, I have a couple questions um, for the applicant or for the city. <clears throat> so this variance, you know, squeezes out the setbacks a little bit. Has any consideration been given to the neighbors on either side. It looks like on the survey there's hedges on both sides where now a new wall is proposed and I also see an easement on the west side that presumably is going to house the existing water main but there's light poles in there there's the wall in there have has that been looked at yet? Yes yeah we've coordinated with both adjacent property owners um, on the east side is the MD now they're actually very happy for us to go do some cleanup there and they're gonna they've, so they've seen the plan and are happy with the proposed plan with walls and, and enhanced plantings as well over on that side. On the west side, there's actually a grade change over there, so we're going to have two walls right. in that area mm -hmm. uh, to accommodate both the grade change as well as our screening requirements, and we're coordinating uh, internally with the city on maintenance because there's a gap between those walls uh, that will make sure it needs to stay clean so it's not getting rubbish and stuff in there. Um, in regards to the easement, yeah, we've coordinated with city engineering and utilities on that easement location for the water main extension through the site, and they were okay with the you know, couple of Im improvements being in that easement as well. Thank you. How long is it going to take? I mean, it has not much to do. I, I, actually, personally, I think it's a huge improvement. The way it circulates and the massing works much better than before. It's not so stuck. Two questions. One of them I remember, like you said, there's a drop towards with the west, quite significant. And you're supposed to do no more than eight foot tall wall. Is that going to be eight foot from this, from this side, or eight full including including that? It's going to be pretty tall. The double, they gotta build this yeah. double yeah. wall. Per but code, uh, in uh, on both the west side and the north side, it's going to be eight feet from the lowest adjacent grade. Uh, okay. we, we coordinated that with uh, okay. with city engineering as well, because on the north side we've got some grading constraints right. because we're raising our site just a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but that wall is going to be slightly retaining over there. So it's eight foot max wall height. Yes. Okay, so it's not going to be sixteen foot tall. Correct. Tall. Okay. Yeah, we're leaving their wall because that's on their property. So right. we, we had looked at with the city of whether or not we could have one wall instead of mm -hmm. having the duplicate but decided that it was in the best interest of the city to That's just do our own wall and also i remember from back then there's a drainage a little side drainage issue that how you going to take care of that is retention no retention it's not, a, it's not quite applicable to, to the question, but I'm curious. No, yeah, happy to answer. Right. Uh, the existing site has no drainage. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, exi the proposed project will be a retention site. We did not connect into Linton Boulevard, okay. uh, so we're fully retaining it. We've added exfiltration trench through the whole site and, and meet the requirements of the state. Okay, so it's, not, it's not draining to the back. Correct. To the, to the other yeah, group. and with the walls, it's, it's keeping everything Good. inside oh, anyways. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, as I said, I'm pretty happy with so. The, uh, the, I believe it was stated in the staff report that the old building didn't wouldn't fully meet today's NFPA requirements for a firehouse as far as space and width and maintenance, yeah. et cetera. So it uh, was it was a problem, but the implication is that the new building will meet current NFPA requirements for what you have to have in a firehouse. I assume. Yes, that's correct. The other question I had is: there any allowance in this question of open space, non-vehicular open space? of using permeable pavement to compensate. Yeah. No, we actually had looked at that with the city staff and in that definition of open space, it says it must be planted because we had thought about using, you know, those turf block pavers where you have grass growing up in between and that wouldn't meet the way the code is written. So okay. we did explore that, but, you know, trying to be creative. Uh, so good idea there, but, you know, we, we didn't meet the intent of the code. Also, I'd like to add that it's um, non-vehicular open space. So with even with the pavers, if they were to percolate through, it's right. vehicular um, space. Right. But the, the, even with used cars parked on the back rear, the fire department, I mean, the fire truck turnaround is fine? Yes. The rear end. Correct. Okay. Yeah, did the, the turning movements do not impinge upon the parking. Right. Uh, no other comments from the board. I, we're well, ready is to it open yet? Or will it, when will it open? 
when will the when will the firehouse be built? <laughs> it's not built. I know it's no. built already. That's, I know it's that's built. for the city. To, I don't I know, know what's, what's your construction schedule? I just want to know like when is it going to. You know, op like a, are they going to be moving everything from the old one? That's what I mean. So the yeah, the demolition is in process right now. The actual Good. whole building has been demolished. So if you Good. drive by now, you'll probably see some construction materials out there. Good. So yeah, the demolition has already taken place. Uh, we've got a construction schedule that's tentative, but it's in, you know depending on these hearings and city approval. So oh, good. <laughs> as fast as we can. <laughs> If I can, Chair, uh, Amy Alvarez, Development Services, I just wanted to, as a reminder, we have the findings on uh, the screen and they are in your staff report um, as part of the consideration in whether you grant or do not grant a variance. These, these yeah, are the findings understand. for you to consider. Uh, I personally like to follow them as we go through the staff report <laughs> one by one. I have it easy to, easy to see. The screens are nice. I think the screens are nice for the audience. They're not so good for us. <laughs> right, if right. the one on the back wall uh, would be great, but it's not there. Yes. Okay. Well, and then you wouldn't be able to see it, yeah, but yeah. Um, anybody wouldn't be able to see sure. it, not just you. Sorry. Um, anyways, your findings are on page three and four of your staff report. Yes. Chair, if there's no further board discussion, um, just as a reminder or maybe information for our new board members, um, we don't do just a traditional motion as you may see some of the other boards do. I'll actually read the board order aloud. Uh, we'll stop after each element and Ms. Miller will do a roll call. They are written in a way there's no trick questions. So if you're in support of the variance, you believe that it meets the criteria, then it will be a yes response. Uh, pursuant to section 224C2, uh, we do need the concurring vote of five members. It specifically says five members um, in order to, to grant the variance. So all five members will need to vote yes for all six elements in order for the variance to be granted. Just to make that clear. Once all six um, criteria have gone through all six, I'll give you further direction or advice on how to make a motion at that point based upon um, whether the board members have voted yes or no on any particular uh, element, okay? Great. All right, so this is, uh, we actually have two board orders. One will be for the perimeter setback reduction from 10 feet to five, and I'll do that order first. The second order will be for the non-vehicular open space reduction from 25 to 22.8%. This is file number 2023-032 20, at the June 15, 2023 Board of Adjustments meeting uh, for the address at 651 West Linton Boulevard. The request is consideration of a variance from Land Development Regulations 4.34K to allow a perimeter setback of 5 feet, whereas 10 feet is required. Pursuant to Land Development Regulations, Section 2.47A5, following consideration of all the evidence and testimony, the Board of Adjustment for the City of Delray Beach finds as follows. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not generally applicable to other land structures or buildings subject to the same zoning. Diane? Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. By Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Two, that little interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties subject to the same zoning. Mike Mile? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Three, that the special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from actions of the applicant. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Four, that granting the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other land structures and buildings under the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Five, that the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify granting of the variance and that the variance is a minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land building or structure. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. And six, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. 
Vlad Dumitrescu. Yes. Robert Cohen. Yes. Pursuant to LDR Section 2.2.4D7, all decisions of the Board Adjustments are final. Uh, at this time, the Board has made positive findings that all six elements are satisfied. I need a Board member other than the Chair. Uh, if you could just make a motion to approve uh, the perimeter setback reduction for uh, 651 West Linton Boulevard should be sufficient. And if you don't remember all that, you can say so moved. So moved. Second. <laughs> And Diane, can we get a uh, roll call on that as well, please? Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. So the variance uh, request to allow a perimeter setback of five feet where 10 is required has been approved. The second uh, variance associated with the file is, again, the reduction from the non-vehicular open space from 25% to 22.8. This is file number 2023-032 of the Board of Adjustments meeting on June 15, 2023 for the property at 651 West Linton Boulevard. It's consideration of a variance request from Land Development Regulations 4.3.4K to allow non-vehicular open space of 22.8%, whereas 25% is required. Uh, pursuant to Land Development Regulations, Section 2.4.7A5, following consideration of all the evidence and testimony, the Board of Adjustments for the City of Delray Beach finds as follows. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not generally applicable to other land structures or buildings subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Two, that literal interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Three, that the special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from the actions of the applicant. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Four, that granting the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other land structures and buildings under the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Five, that the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify granting of the variance and that the variance is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. And six, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alex Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Okay. Uh, the board has made positive findings for all six elements. Uh, pursuant to LDR section 2.2.4D7, all decisions of the Board of Adjustment are final. Uh, this time, if a board member could make a motion to approve the variance request for 651 West Linton Boulevard to allow non vehicular open space at 22.8%. So moved. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. The variance has been uh, for non vehicle open space has been approved. Thank you all for your consideration and your time tonight. Appreciate it. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Now proceed to the second item on the agenda, case number 2023-137 for 502 Jaeger Drive, consideration of a variance request from Land Development Regulations Section 4.3.4K to allow a side street setback of 12 feet 2 inches, whereas a minimum of 15 feet is required. Hey, good evening, Jennifer Buse, Planner for the City of Delray. I'd like to put into record file number 2023-137, and the applicant is here. Uh, 
Good afternoon, board members. My name is Luke Mai. I am the owner of 502 Jaeger Drive and requesting a side setback variance. Uh, that was a actually really nice professional presentation. It's going to be hard to follow, but let's see what I can do. <laughs> if you don't mind, before uh, you begin your presentation, Chair, can we do ex parte? Yeah, has there anyone on the board have any ex parte communications with regard to 502 Jaeger Drive? No. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Proceed. Uh, so just the background on this house, I purchased this house in 2015-16. The house was originally built in 1977 as a single family home. Uh, there was an addition constructed in 2001 uh, that supposedly included, uh, at least in the city's information, a, a two car garage. However, I personally, when I bought this house, was not able to fit a small sedan into this two car garage and close it. Uh, so we decided in 2016 to make use of this space and just enclose that space. Um, so currently, uh, I'm requesting a, a variance in order to fit a two-car, uh, you know, square garage into this space, which would allow us to park two cars uh, that would be able to be kept safe at night with all the break-ins that are happening, as well as store items such as patios and things like that inside the garage during hurricane season. Um, the garage will be in the northeast corner, which I'll show on the next map. I wanted to show a couple of pictures of the property. So this is something unusual. This is what's called an orchid tree. If you guys are not familiar with it, this is in the back of the property. When this tree blooms, it basically snows flowers. <laughs> and every day you can clean up these flowers and they'll re-snow flowers and this happens for weeks on end. I think a lot of people have never seen an orchid tree. They've seen an orchid plant, but this is what happens when the orchid plant goes to the size of an orchid tree. Um, so the background on this, which is provided for me by the city, the minimum setback uh, for zoning R1AA is 15 feet. Uh, well, I'm requesting the reduction to 12.2 feet, uh, to, uh, to, sorry, 12 feet and two inches. The notice that went out from the city was actually incorrect. Uh, we're not requesting, I think I think there was more that you guys wrote on this, on this notice. I've got a copy of it. So we're only requesting a, the minimum of 12.2 inches. Um, it, so if, if granted the variance, um, you know, but also the, 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 the current house is not in compliance so because it doesn't have two parking spots. Two parking spots have to be in the house but not within the setbacks. So this house doesn't currently have that. So what we're trying to do is correct the non-compliance of the current house by placing a garage in here. Um, so you can see here that, um, so, so this, is, this, is, this is Jaeger Drive up here and that's the front entrance or the, uh, the driveway. Here's Albatross Road uh, and so when these roads meet, there is a curve. So the property line, which as you can see here, actually goes along this curve. And so the garage we're trying to put is in this northeast corner, and we're trying to build a 22 by 20 car garage, which is basically the standard garage that would fit a car. The entrance would be right here in the front uh, for the opening, and this is the existing driveway. Mm -hmm. So the variance is this little sliver uh, that you see in purple uh, from, it would be, change from 15 feet to 12.2 feet and we're not asking for the entire setback to be moved we're only requesting this amount here uh, if this variance is not uh, approved then the entrance to the garage is narrowed and the narrowing now does not prevent two cars to enter that that particular garage uh, what's interesting is the other side of the house which is here the setback on this is only 10 feet but the way the house was placed was placed 15 feet from the neighbor so if this house was actually built a little bit more this way by you know even mm -hmm. two feet or four feet uh, we wouldn't need a, to request a variance but because the house was placed more centrally in the 1977 when it was built uh, this is why we're now requesting this variance here uh, the addition as I said would bring the house into compliance because it's a non-conforming property which lacks two parking spaces that are not in front or the site setback uh, the proposed new addition reduces the visual impact of cars being parked in the driveway. Uh, the variance allows for the current owner, which is myself, to have a two-car garage, which is normal in the Tropic Palms neighborhood. Uh, the garage also allows for storage and all that cars at night for the safety, but also of other, uh, you know, lawn furniture, things like that during hurricane season. Um, uh, and so, so just so you know, this, this is my banana trees here. We have over 25 banana trees that I planted, and we have a star fruit tree and has now given about 50 to 70 star fruit every, uh, every season. Uh, and to continue on that, uh, we now have uh, two huge 
mango treats. So if you guys ever need mangoes, you're welcome to stop by. We have them for months on end. <laughs> and this is my new prized possession, if you guys are familiar with this. And f just so you can understand, this is my hand here, and this is the size of the, of the fruit. This is a jackfruit. Uh, these, I think this season we'll get to 25 pounds. I think last year I had them at 20 pounds. And this tree is only about six years old, and we have four of these trees. So we tend to give a lot of this away to the neighbors because we can't consume it. I think the neighbors are even getting probably too much of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, we talked about this. Uh, so there would be no impact on the Tropic Palms area, and it would maintain the character and the vernacular of the original home. Uh, we're not asking to you know, demolish the structure and build a whole other large uh, house on there like, like it's common in the, in the neighborhood currently. Um, and we're just trying to get a garage that would be able to fit the two, two cars in it. So this is the representation of a house as a bird's eye view. Um, you can see that in the yellow, this is the current driveway. Um, and then this is the garage that we would be adding on. Currently, there's, a pave, there's pavers here which allow for one car parking. Uh, we want to extend that into a garage. Uh, this is the property line here in the red, and in the purple is what, what we're requesting uh, to be able to do the variance. And you can see on this property, all of these trees, we planted over 110 Calusia trees of gold along the entire property all the way around. Uh, there's coconut trees, palm trees. Here's the, here's the famous mango trees, and here's the, uh, the other ones in the back that we've kind of shown pictures of. I was, re I was requested to show pictures of what the property looks like currently. Uh, so this is where the garage would go. It would actually start from this wall here, go to the edge of these pavers, and go over this way, and this would be two, two entrance. These Calusia trees would not be discarded, actually. I would like to keep these, so what we're going to do is we're going to just move them over to the edge where the garage is to keep, keep this. Uh, and currently, this, there's a one-car parking here that's being parked currently. Uh, and this is another view, just kind of more from the street side. You can see, you know, uh, even if, you know, the, the, the view from the street is pretty minimal. If you have a garage put in here, it would have, you know, the neighbors, it would not interfere with the view of what this property currently looks like. Uh, and this is just a view from the side, uh, west-facing west view here. So I, I put these questions in here. This is what I was uh, given by Jennifer, who's been ex extremely helpful in this process. As a, as a regular resident of Delray, the process is not always easy to go through these variances. So uh, she said I had to answer, or I should, answer, you know, go through some of these questions. These are the seven questions that you guys have answered now that I've learned after seeing one presentation. Uh, so the speci special conditions and circumstances exist which are particular to the land structure of the building involved, which are not generally applicable to other structures or lands or buildings. Uh, I think the answer is yes. The property is located in intersection with the width of the street runs on a diagonal. So Albatross cuts <coughs> diagonal to enter Jaeger. And that's what's limiting the uh, the perimeter or the setback at 15 feet. Um, and also, the, the Jaeger, the Albatross Road is supposed to be a, a road supposed to be 50. Uh, I'm sorry, 60 feet width, and that, that road's actually 50 feet. So there's also another 10 feet added there. So there's plenty of room between the road. You have a large swale, which is about I think 10 feet. Then you have a sidewalk. Then there's another part of the property, and then that's where the property line is. So there's actually a lot of a lot of room there between the road and the house. Uh, the literal, be the literal interpretation of the regulation would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other parties subject to the same zoning. Uh, I think the answer is yes. Literal interpretation would limit building of a two-car garage with a standard entrance to allow proper egress and, and uh, ingress and egress due to the 15-foot setback. Uh, due to the, the special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from action of the applicant, I believe the answer is yes. The road was not built by me as the applicant. I have no control of how the roads are built. And I have no control of uh, the width of the roads, uh, especially road albatross. Uh, the granting of the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privileges that is denied to other land structures or buildings under the same zoning. I believe the answer is yes. I'm not asking for any special privileges as compared to other single family homes that already have two car garages. I'm also not requesting that the entire setback be, bat be placed at 12 feet, only that uh, particular sliver, if that's something that's possible. Uh, the, the, that the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify the granting of the variance and that the variance is a minimal variance that will make possible the reasonable use of land building and structure. Again, I'm only asking for a 2.8 feet uh, maximum variance in a triangular fashion. And that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations, but not be injurious to the neighborhood or other otherwise detrimental to public welfare. Uh, the building of the garage will not have any effect on the neighborhood, including the, mi the minimal view from the street. There will be no limitation of sunlight. There's no limit to the use of the sidewalk along the street or Albatross Road. And then this variance would actually allow us to 
cure the nonconformity of the building. Uh, I guess questions are later, right? Sounds good. Thank you. If this, I can board yeah. again, Amy Alvarez, Development Services. Um, the applicant, thank you for pointing something out that our um, our public notice that went out, again, I just want to clarify this for the record. It, it was incorrect, but um, it was actually um, more uh, giving. It was requesting <laughs> more relief than the applicant yes. is seeking. Thank you for wording that yeah. correctly. So the, the notice, notice two, was 12 point two feet. Yeah. yeah. So the notice requested more relief than what the applicant is actually seeking. So the notice right. sent to the public was actually greater than what's being proposed. Okay. So the the notice would be sufficient in that in that manner. The, the drawing is showing 12.2 feet. Is that that's the correct dimension? Right. The backup okay. that you have is correct. I just wanted to, for the record, so that it 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 was clear that we did not notice something as. Uh, le How did you word it, William? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 okay, yeah. I, I, th I, think, I think we all understand. We're not, yes, yeah. we're not, the so applicant slash. isn't asking for more than what we noticed. Well, that's good. Yeah. Slash, and the yeah. staff report says 12 feet 2 inches, but that's, it's right. not, but that's, that's but the okay. public notice is what needs to be right, correct, right. because if it was not, then mm -hmm. we'd have to come back and do this again another time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that what's it? Uh, but I think point, uh, Jennifer I think is. Point 0.4 inches difference? Yeah. Um, yes, but uh, yeah. Jennifer is ready right, to yeah. provide her presentation. Okay. Okay, again, this is 502 Jager um, Drive. It is in the R1 AA zoning district, which is a single family, and there is single family surrounded on all sides except for the east um, across the street from Albatross. It is um, RN, which is multifamily. The consideration um, of the request tonight is for um, relief from land development regulation 4.3.4K to allow the side street setback on the northeast corner at 12 feet 2 inches where a minimum of 15 is required. Um, again, um, a very thorough uh, presentation, so I'll go through this very quickly. The house was built in 1977 with the original garage right here. I have a pointer. Not really good at this. Um, I'm not going to use the pointer. <laughs> The left arrow. Try to try the arrow on the keyboard, Jen. Oh, you gotta click. Yeah, there you go. Okay, sorry. Um, it does say original garage here, and then back here was the 704 um, edition that. Um, it was storage, when I pulled the permit, it was storage, uh, a garage, and um, kind of like a tool shed or something. Um, the red is where the proposed new garage is going, and it's 12 feet 2 inches at the top, and it is meeting the requirement throughout um, the rest of the area. So again, um, the minimum setback, for side street setback for R1AA is 15 feet. Um, the proposal is for a 443 square foot addition to accommodate a two car garage. And here are your findings. And um, these are just some board considerations. Um, much of the neighborhood have, um, they have similar shaped corner lots. The request is applicable to only a portion of the new addition. The um, garage did exist but was enclosed to living space. Um, and um, Albatross Road is classified as a local street and it's actually 60 feet wide and um, only 50 feet is required. So there is additional street um, to where it would not um, affect uh, the neighborhood. And that concludes my presentation. That's good, no complaints. Does anyone on the board have any questions or comments? Uh -oh. Chair, can we do a public comment first? Oh, all right. Is there any comment from the public about the variance request at 502 Jager Drive? Hello. 
My name is Thelma Jones, and I lived at 501 Yeager Drive in Delray Beach, directly across from my neighbor. Okay. And um, I have no objection with him putting in his garage. It would not affect the viewing of my home. It um, directly across from my yard, from the lawn. So it doesn't have no effect on my home. Therefore, I have no objection. That's good. And if it's okay with the city requirements, it's fine with me. That's good. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. That's important. That's good. Yeah. No complaints. Is there anyone else? Hello, my name is Aloma Raglan. I live at 505 Jagger Drive, just second house from the corner. I have no objection or any problem with e construction. Constructing is um is the garage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Anyone else for this project? Any comments or questions now from the board? I oh, uh, one more thing, Chair. Uh, uh, cross and rebuttal. So oh, if the I'm applicant sorry. or the I'm city have any cross or rebuttal. Hang on. I keep losing it when I switch pages. Okay. I have no rebuttals. I do just, not. Just wait, wait a second. I just have a question. Sure. Since you're here. Can I no. go ahead and ask the question now? <laughs> the, what type of roof are you going to put on the, uh, on the addition? The reason I'm asking because I'm looking at the aerial view and I'm trying to make something that's not going to be huge and propose something yeah. and if you look a little further the th three houses to the left a third to the left yeah. they have basically and you have actually a kind of a hip roof over the the wing that projects outside on the on the upper side of the side of the where the garage would be you know I mean hip roof means that it's sloping yeah in three sides towards the I mean, four sides, but in this case, towards the street. Uh, I suggest you do something similar over there so it, so it gets lower as it goes away from the house instead of going higher. Exactly, so. Right, or, uh, or a gable, whatever. You exactly, so if, if you're looking at the house, the right. right side of the house, which is the upper left-hand corner, I don't know if we can make that any bigger or anything, but. Uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, that would be right. that. So That's this good. part of the house here, this corner here, already has a what you're calling is a, uh, it's a triple. Yeah, it's roof. a gable. So if you're looking at it's it, a, it's, it's a exactly hip, a gable. Hip roof. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be the exact same. It's the right side okay. that's already existing is going to the okay. new one is going to match that. Okay. So that when you're looking at the house, okay. it's an exact match okay. on the I'm perpendicular. Just makes it's, sense. It's a good point. Yeah. Makes sense because yeah. it could do a hip, but. No, I think I would, gonna stick I'm going to match it exactly so the left, oh. right side of the house exactly like the left, left side right. of the house. It just yeah. looks Thank more you. natural Thank and more appealing. Know, symmetrical. Minimize. Exactly. Yeah. Symmetrical Minimize is the word I was thinking for. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I do what? have a question. Go ahead, um, go ahead. So the justification for this is that we're trying to eliminate a nonconformity with parking requirement uh, with this garage. Right. Every graphic that I saw seemed like it would be really hard on the east side to get a vehicle into the garage. Do you plan on expanding the driveway over so that you can actually drive into it on that side? Yeah, so exactly. So the existing driveway would allow entrance into the into the front of that garage. And then uh, what we're going to do is pour a triangle driveway. Okay. Right? But so the city requirements or the city that I spoke to, the building department said that as the driveway can oh. be expanded on that angle as long as that driveway ends at the property line where it currently ends. Mm -hmm. So then there would be enough room to fit two cars in. Okay. Um, so you're correct right. in what you're saying. Uh, the real, the limit is when you take the front of the garage, the entrance, and you start decreasing the size of it to, you know, to, let's say we, we went with the compliance. Mm -hmm. Now you're down to... 18 feet now you have the wall the 16 feet no that, then you're so. asking for a variance on the size of a parking space no i, I understand yeah. that i just none of the graphics showed a driveway expanding out to there so i assume staffs looked at that and there's no open space issues or anything like that okay yeah. thank okay. you thanks uh, i apologize that was not my phone that was my three minute alarm going off <laughs> <laughs> if, if i can real quick those those items that were just mentioned um that'll be looked at as part of the building permit okay thank you I, I, it's this funny situation with this uh, thirty. They're 
clearance uh, for parking in this beyond the setback areas I agree this seems to solve that problem but I wonder whether well, of course the, the the garage the old garage that was converted into non garage space also would have provided that parking area but uh, once it was changed from a garage to something not a garage then the set the uh, allowable parking disappeared again there was never I don't think there was ever from well, the picture ever a chance for parking on a driveway uh, beyond the 30 feet, it seems to me, unless the original very small garage was accepted only because the owner only had very small cars. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think there's probably two pieces of evidence um, that you heard. One, the applicant did state that his sedan would not fit in whatever pre existing garage structure was there. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that in the staff report. Um, in addition to testimony you've heard that that entire area was not solely a garage that it was multiple functions or uses other than car storage yes if that provides you with any direction chair mm -hmm. okay. if I had the foresight you know in 2016 I probably would have done this in 2016 but now that I've lived in Florida for long enough I realize you, you have to have a garage here especially when the winds come so you live here long American. enough and you realize what you need. And so I probably, if I was smart enough and lived here long enough, I would have done this before, <laughs> you know, eight years ago. But mm -hmm. unfortunately now it's a second project, you know. No other further comments. We can proceed to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Vote, Very vote, well, Chair. Uh, just a reminder, I'll be reading the entire board order, stopping after each element, which at which time Ms. Miller will do a roll call. There is no trick. Uh, questions here if you're in support of the variance and uh, the, the response will always be yes after each item and there's only one board order for this application mm -hmm. this is uh, file number 2023-137 for the June 15 2023 Board of Adjustments meeting for the address at 502 um, Jager Drive it's consideration of a variance request from Land Development Regulations 4.3.4K to allow a side street setback of 12 feet 2 inches, whereas a minimum of 15 feet is required. Pursuant to Land Development Regulations Section 2.4.7A5, following consideration of all the evidence and testimony, the Board of Adjustment for the City of Delray Beach finds as follows. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not generally applicable to others' lands, structures, or buildings subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Two, that literal interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Three, that the special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from the actions of the applicant. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Four, that granting the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other land structures and buildings under the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen. Yes. Five, that the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify granting of the variance and that the variance is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of land building or structure. Mike Miles. Yes. Jesse Slusser. Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan. Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu. Yes. Robert Cohen. Yes. And six, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Mike Miles. Yes. Jesse Slusher? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Okay, the Board of Adjustments has made positive findings for all six elements in order to grant a variance. Pursuant to LDR Section 2.2.4 D7, all decisions of the Board of Adjustment are final. Uh, at this point, just a, a motion to approve uh, the variance request for file number 2023-137. <laughs> so moved. So moved. I forgot. Congratulations. <laughs> no, we have to vote. You got a second? Second. Oh, second. second. Yeah. And we have to vote. I know. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosher? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. 
Variance for file number 2023-137 has been approved. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Don't make the video of an overhang. The next uh, item on the agenda is case 2023-051 for 2003 Southwest 2nd Street. Consideration of variance request from land development regulations, section 4.6.15 G1 yard encroachments to allow the construction of individual swimming pools for each unit of a duplex to encroach 15 feet into the back into the front settlement whereas swimming pools shall not extend into the front setback of 25 feet hi jennifer buse again and this is file number 2023-051 and the applicant is ready and chair uh, can we do ex parte yes. and does anyone on the board have any ex parte communications to report regarding this case? No. 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 And Chair and Board members, um, while they're loading the presentation, we will be doing two separate board orders for this item. Uh, this is a duplex, and so it'll be a board order for Unit 1 and a board order for Unit 2. Uh, so just keep that in mind uh, while you're reviewing the presentation. Thank you. Ready for me? Yes, ready to okay. proceed. Good evening. Um, for the record, my name is Christina Belenke of Dunning, Miskell, and Backman. My address is 14 Southeast 4th Street in Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces uh, on the board again, and welcome to the new board members. Um, look forward to being here before you this evening. Um, so my clients, um, the Tirolis, have purchased this property at 203 Southwest 2nd Street. And I'm going to try not to confuse you because it is located on the corner of Southwest 2nd Street and Southwest 2nd Avenue. Um, and I'm going to be referencing those streets a lot throughout my presentation, so I apologize in advance. Um, the property is highlighted by the red box, and just to put things into perspective, um, essentially at the top of that graphic where you have the word property is where uh, the courthouse is and their overflow parking lot. So we are essentially uh, just a little bit south of that county courthouse. Uh, so we are here requesting a variance from section 4.615 G1 to allow a swimming pool for both unit one and unit two uh, within the front setback area. Um, 10 feet set back from the front property line, whereas the code does not currently allow for pools within the front setback. Um, and just to give you some frame of reference, this is the existing property. It's currently vacant. Um, I believe there at one point was a structure, a single family home from about 1935 or so, but I want to say it was demolished around 2000. Um, so it's been vacant for quite some time. Uh, again, my, purchase, my clients purchased the property several years ago um, and have probably for two or th three years at this point been working uh, with city staff, uh, going through the permitting process, uh, working with two different architects um, to try and find a, a home that can be developed on the property that fits their needs. Um, it is a duplex. So my client is proposing to occupy one unit, the larger unit, um, and they want the second unit available uh, for their aging uh, parents so that obviously they can keep a close eye on them. Um, you know, in the event something happens, they're not too far away, they're just next door. Um, so we are proposing two separate units. Um, the property itself is only 0 0.23 acres in size. So that's just over 10,000 square feet, 10,181 square feet. And um, we are required to make some dedications. There's a dedication for a corner clip um, at the intersection of Southwest 2nd Avenue and Southwest 2nd Street that's highlighted in the blue box there. Um, and then also along the alley, there's an alley um, on the west side of the property. Um, so there's a dedication uh, noted by the blue box there as well. So when we 
make those dedications, uh, the properties decreased in size further uh, to a little bit under 10,000 square feet. Um, one thing I do want to note is my client's not seeking to fit a, the proverbial square peg in a round hole here. Um, I have lots of clients that try and do that and try and push the boundaries. Um, so I just wanted to give you a frame of reference. Um, unit one, the ground floor is 1,433 square feet. Um, unit two, it's just over 1,000 square feet on the ground floor. Uh, you can see kind of the floor plan layout. It's very modest, a small living area, small kitchen and dining area, bedroom on the ground floor. Um, we're not proposing to do anything monstrous here. Um, and when looking at the maximum lot coverage in this zoning district, we're allowed a maximum lot coverage of 40%, and this plan is only at about 28.1%. So there's significant open space um, being provided. We're not maxing out the property by any means, but because of the size and the shape and um, the, the regulations that I'll get into further, we're limited as to where we can put our outdoor use areas, our recreational amenities. Um, now those amenities, those outdoor use living spaces, that's incredibly important to most families in South Florida. Uh, my clients in particular um, have developed this plan because they want to be in Florida. They uh, are currently up north and they want to move here and be able to utilize the outdoor areas. Um, and so the pools really are critical to them. Um, I've asked them quite frankly um, what would happen if, if they didn't get the approval and I believe the answer I received was they're probably not going to move forward with the project. They've spent a ton of money and time going through this again, probably years going back with staff about the different setbacks and interpretations that we'll get into. Um, and you know the reality is that these pools are necessary for new homes in South Florida. So the particular circumstance with this property that is unique stems from uh, the kind of orientation of the lot. So Land Development Code section 4.3.4 E3 states essentially that for corner lots um, that have you know, two street frontages, your front setback is determined based on the narrow, narrower portion of the lot. So our narrower portion of the lot is on the east side. The south side is actually wider. So under a regular circumstance, the east side would con be considered your front setback. Your south side would be considered your side street setback. And the pool would be allowed 10 feet within the side street setback. Now, Southwest 2nd Street, the street on the south end, um, is identified, I believe it's a collector street. Um, and so there is a nuance where if the side is, or if the property is located um, on a corner lot, but it's a collector or arterial street, then the front setback is along that collector or arterial street. Um, if you notice, you know, I have the setback sides labeled. So again, um, based on that interpretation of the code, which we don't disagree with, the front setback is Southwest 2nd Street. What's interesting here and what took probably uh, quite a bit of time to sort through when, you know, submitting the permits initially is that the alley is actually the rear. The rear is not uh, the north side of the property, even though the front is on the south. Um, and that's because alleys in this zoning district and within the CBD are typically classified as the rear. Um, you would typically have the alley in the rear of your property, not necessarily on the side. And so it is a little bit of a unique situation. Uh, I'm hoping I laid that out clearly enough for you, but we'll continue to go through uh, the presentation and um, you know, supplement that as well. Now, collector streets and the intent of that provision is essentially that as you're going through a main 
street within the city, you want to see front doors. You want to see buildings oriented towards the, the main street. You want to see large, expansive lawns. Southwest 2nd Street has not been developed necessarily in that manner. You have um, platted properties uh, that have been subdivided over time, many um, you know, decades and decades ago, that are oriented in all kinds of different directions. So you have um, some, you can see, is this, there we go, uh, right here on Southwest 2nd Street, um, similar situation where the building is oriented to the west rather than along Southwest 2nd Street. Um, this configuration where you have narrow lots here facing the collector is more so what was intended so you can have you know those access points but even if you look at this property here that has that same configuration and the narrow um, property fronting Southwest 2nd Street the actual access and the frontage is not on that street it's on the side street um, so it has been developed over time in a completely different manner um, the other thing is that you're actually permitted to have a six-foot privacy wall um, within that front setback so your large expansive lawns that are in the front of your house um, are not necessarily required and in fact with our proposed plan which I'll just oh, going the wrong way um, which I'll go back to we do have um, six foot privacy walls proposed and that's essentially this line here along the property line for security and um, you know to ensure that there is privacy within those amenity areas so that you know my clients can have a place where they can actually enjoy their yard because again um, you know with the rear property and the dedication there's not much room here and certainly not enough room for a pool there's a 15 foot setback required I think we're at 17 feet um, the pool must be 10 feet from the property line so it does not permit enough space and similarly in the rear here which is actually the side interior um, there's a 15 foot setback but again it does not allow for a pool you'd have five feet directly adjacent to the house so despite being on a collector that vision of having you know all of these homes fronting on the main street is not a reality and even based on you know the code allowances um, it is something that is not necessarily ever going to be a reality because you can have these walls um, that take away from that so going through the actual criteria I'm going to go through them one by one um, I apologize if I'm being a little repetitive but I do think it's an important distinction um, so special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or buildings involved which are not generally applicable to other land structures and buildings within the same zoning district again um, typically with properties that are a corner lot the narrow frontage would be considered the front setback um, that would be most cases within the city um, unless it is along an arterial or collector street um, if Southwest 2nd Avenue the narrow frontage were considered the front then the pool would be allowed as shown within what would then be the side street setback um, also the properties platted orientation when it was platted decades and decades ago was oriented in such a manner that again the narrow part of the lot was um, along the east side along Southwest 2nd Avenue um, and consistent with the lots that are above it so it was essentially intended that they would be developed in a similar manner literal interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties within the same zoning district 
So pools are very much an accessory use that are permitted within residential zoning districts. Um, again, my client is seeking to be able to have that pool um, within South Florida, which is uh, incredibly needed and uh, critical, I think, to most successful residential developments these days. Um, in most other situations, again, we're located on a corner lot. We would be allowed by right to have the pool in this location. Again, just because of the nuance um, and the fact that it's on a collector street, um, we are being denied otherwise the opportunity to install a pool in the same location as other properties would be able to. The special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from the actions of the applicant. Again, um, you know, this property was platted decades ago. My client acquired it recently. They did not configure the lot or orient the lot in this kind of condition. Um, they did not decide which setback would be considered front versus uh, side street. Um, that was all dictated in the code. They did not um, decide that Southwest 2nd Street on the south would be a collector. Um, you know, these are all things that happened over time, not even when the property was initially <coughs> subdivided, um, again, many, many decades ago. Um, these requirements have not been created as a result of the actions of the applicant. Again, uh, they're seeking just to have a pool, which is, um, you know, in a location that in a, many other instances would be considered the side street setback and allowed. Granting the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other land structures and buildings. Again, uh, pools are rights commonly enjoyed or, or accessory uses that are commonly enjoyed and permitted within this zoning district. Um, the outcome of the variance would be the same as uh, another property that was situated on a corner lot um, that was not on a collector. Um, it's also important to note that, you know, as part of this development, we are required to make additional dedications. Um, and it is a constrained site as is. Um, there are also uh, site triangles that we have to account for. Um, and again, it's incredible. It's been incredibly difficult for my client to find a plan that works, that still has um, suitable, usable space. These aren't monster buildings by any means. Uh, they are very modest in nature. And my client is really hoping for the opportunity to actually start this process um, and build the home that they've been envisioning for, um, again, at least three years now that I know of. The reasons set forth in the variance justify granting of the variance, and the variance is the minimum variance that will make possible reasonable use of the land building or structure. Um, so again, when looking at these pools, this pool here um, is only 10 feet wide and I believe 22 feet long. This one again is only 10 feet wide, 10 feet wide and 12 feet long. They are not large, expansive lap pools by any means. Um, you know, 10 feet is less than two of me <laughs> if I'm not wearing heels. Um, you could probably fit one pool floaty in there and, and not much else. Um, so, you know, they aren't expansive pools and there's uh, essentially nowhere else where they could go on the property. We've looked at this site over and over. Um, my client, again, has gone through two different architects um, and used a planner as well to sort through all of the intricacies of this site. Um, and there's just nowhere else to, to put a pool. We would be adhering to the 10 foot setback required um, within any other setback area of the property. Um, in addition, again, there will be this six foot high privacy wall. Um, so, you know, in any instance, we are not creating a visual impact. Um, for those traveling along either Southwest 2nd Street or Southwest 2nd Avenue. 
Um, you literally won't be able to even see the pool. Um, so with those things in mind, this is the minimum variance that will make reasonable use of the property. And again, um, the pools are critical to the success um, in, in use by my clients. And then granting the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the existing regulations, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Um, so again, this is just a small pool serving each unit. Um, it's not going to be injurious to the neighborhood or detrimental to the public welfare by any means. Um, you Again, with the privacy wall, the six foot privacy wall, which is permitted by the code, you won't be able to even see the pool when you're uh, walking by unless maybe you're a seven foot tall basketball player <laughs> um, but you're you're really not going to even know that it's there um, and then again the position of the pool is consistent with the intent of the existing regulations um, and would otherwise be permitted if it was not situated on a city collector street um, and so I apologize again for being a little repetitive. I felt it was important. Um, but with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And I thank you for your time. All right. The uh, city have a presentation, too? Okay. Um, since, since that was so thorough, I will go through this quickly. Um, this is 203 Southwest 2nd Street, <clears throat> and uh, this is in the multifamily residential district in the Southwest Overlay, and it is surrounded by multifamily on all sides. Um, this is a consideration of a request for land development regulation 4.6.15 G1. This is the yard encroachments that does not allow pools to be into the 25-foot um, front setback or into the front setback as Christina said um, this because of the collector being on um, Southwest 2nd Street it's the hierarchy of the street so the hierarchy of the street takes order of where the front exists so the front is on the longer end whereas it would normally be on the shorter end the rear, and in this case, you might be asking as to why it is not where the side interior is, and um, a determination was made that because alleys mostly um, front rears, and the fact that um, if the front had been taken from the shorter side, that's where the rear would also have been. This just shows you here that they have met all other um, setback requirements and that the pools are going to um, be proposed at 10 feet. Oh, let's see. This just shows the um, 10 foot setback or, or, um, or the encroachment with, with the 10 foot setback. Um, as uh, Christina said, if this were considered the side street, um, these pools would go straight to permitting and would not need a um, variance. And these are your findings. And just a couple board considerations. Um, the construction of the duplex is on the corner lot, and it does have constraints um, with additional setbacks um, other than R1A. If this were in a single family residential, R1A does have um, reduced setbacks. Um, it, if, if it is the minimal variance, um, this is a new construction, and um, the home will be in line with the rest of the homes on the block on Southwest 2nd Street. And that concludes my presentation. Are there any public comments on this case? Hi, Patrice Fitzgerald. I live at 114 Southwest 2nd Street, down the street. They don't even know I'm here. But I want to say I've been living in that neighborhood now three years. And they should be able to build. It's an awkward neighborhood at best. It's a lot of mobility moving on there. No one ever wanted to look at that neighborhood when I moved there. And so I 
want to support them. I don't even know them. I just came here because it's the first time someone in this neighborhood other than myself won't even go into what the city did to us. So I don't want them to have to go through what I went through when nobody cared about that sign of town. Now everybody cares. So it's nice to have people who want to build something that has integrity that may or may not be uh, you know rental or not down the road but at least it'll look good and it'll enhance the collector street um, because it's not in line because everything in that neighborhood is old and it's been there a long time so it will be nice to see some reasonable build and not huge and what they think they're doing is phenomenal and i hope you guys can see past you know the awkwardness of having pool amenities in front side back because it's a unique part of town and i think you're going to start to see as people want to renovate there you're going to see people having a lot more changes in that neighborhood than than has ever been in a long time so as a neighbor probably the only neighbor who will come here at any time really want to give them the kudos for wanting to build something like that and take the advantage a bit considering the sunday village is about to blow up and so it, they should have the right to be able in line with that and not necessarily in line with the neighborhood so i hope as we grow on the northwest set that the commission everybody starts to see what it will take to build and to give integrity to that side without mowing it down and making it look like developers you know and it and it gives a residential feel and continues because i think that's what the city master plan suggested that's what we were forced to do so i hope you guys all take in consideration as people grow that they're allowed to do a little bit more than 50 years ago you know if you look back it's been a long time since anyone's really did anything on that side of town so i am all for it being a neighbor thank you thank you, thank you. I'll ask for any board discussion, Mike? Chair, before we uh, board discussion, cross examination, rebuttal. Oh, I'm sorry. Rebuttal or cross examination for each part from each party? Not from my end, thank you. None for me. All right. Ask uh, for the board to make any comments, Michael? I have one clarification, I think, for the city attorney. The minimum variance possible has nothing to do with the pool size itself, right? Because there's two separate pool sizes shown on here. It's more the setback itself, correct? So the actual provision that a variance is being sought from is section 4.6.15 G1. And the specific provision just says, swimming pool shall not extend into the front setback area noted in section 4.3.4 K. So this one's slightly different in that the variance application of border they don't specifically say X amount of feet reduction because the code doesn't say it has to be set back 25 feet. It says it cannot be in the front setback, which is defined as 25 feet. Mm -hmm. So the way the board order will read is just that they'll be permitted to build a pool within the front setback, getting a variance from that provision. Uh, the board orders also um, contain some language that says that the the variance will be approved, approved if if approved solely for the purposes as presented in the meeting. So the evidence being presented is that there'll be a ten foot separation between um, that the southern street, the southern property line, and the location of the pool. So that would still be something that would travel with this variance through permitting and so forth. Okay, I wanted to make sure I was clear on that that it was primarily setback related because the pools are separate permits and they're two different sizes so I didn't want to get confused during voting thank you Go ahead. Um, are they are they you know if those walls are they supposed to be landscaped or, or exposed um, a masonry wall does need to have landscaping on it in front of it okay so they will be completely all along covered where, with where the masonry wall is shrubbery. yes yes and I mean it's a little peculiar but in terms of parking that has nothing to do with the pools but I still need to go that opening for the two cars that how is that is there, that considered part of the or this, I shouldn't it's bring not that up. yeah it's not part of the variance request um, that's something that that will just be built in compliance with the land development regulations will be addressed at permitting okay gotcha it's just it's a little unusual the whole thing but yeah, my question is, this is R-1-A doesn't have the 
requirement of permanent places for parking within the this not is, within the front backs yet, this is right? rm and no they do not have the same um parking uh rules as um an, a single family home um they can be parked in the front setback and can be tandem okay i understand uh yeah relative to what vlad just asked according to the drawing i'm looking at the masonry walls are right up tight against the visibility triangles right. which doesn't allow a lot of room for much in the way of landscaping so if once they come in for permitting that will also be done through permitting they will have to move the masonry wall back two feet okay. to accommodate for the landscaping so the the plan that you have as an exhibit is to show where the location of the pools will be um, at a maximum as far as closest to the southern property line, but the balance of the improvements can adjust as they go through the permit mm -hmm. review process. The visibility triangle has a height limitation as well. So, so guys, I, I really, uh, yeah. those will all be reviewed <laughs> fully when the permit plans are, are submitted. Um, and it really doesn't have much impact, at least from what I can tell, on, on the application. Um, I, I yeah, don't I understand. Yeah. I just see something happening, well, and that they and if there are again, but unforeseen yeah. pitfalls, yeah. unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, that will be addressed at permitting, and okay. and at least with this variant, you know, the the pools will still be permitted within the the front setback of that. I understand. And just to clarify, I appreciate your comments. We do have. Uh, two feet in these areas but we uh, appreciate your comments and uh, references on the site triangles we we will look into that and make sure we're adequately addressing that i've just dealt with it on another property. Uh, i appreciate it's, it's the height the experience. you have to consider the height of the shrubbery mm -hmm. which if it's low enough yeah, it, it, it's not a visibility problem as i understand <coughs> it because we've had a head trim some ourselves okay uh i can uh, uh, Brandon, or uh, jesse yeah, yeah i can appreciate the uniqueness of the the site um and the the interpretation of the front setbacks and and all that um, and they're giving up land for the corner clip and for the alley so I assume that there's no future widening of Southwest 2nd Street that would affect this currently planned uh, in the comp plan or anything like that for staff it's a look um, I'm sorry it's a collector street and it and the width is 50 feet and so that's what they have now okay thank you anyone else on the board no all right, then uh, call on the attorney to read the board order and questions. So uh, just a reminder, we do have the two board orders, one for each unit. Uh, I'll begin with unit one, which we'll, we're designating uh, the western unit, so the one abutting or adjacent to the alley. This is uh, file number 2023-051 for... The June 15, 2023 uh, Board of Adjustments meeting for the address at 203 Southwest 2nd Street, which is Unit 1, the Western Unit. It's consideration of a variance request, Land Development Regulations 4.6.15 G1, to allow a swimming pool to be constructed in the front setback. Pursuant to Land Development Regulations, Section 2.4.7 A5, following consideration of all the evidence and testimony, the Board of Adjustment for the City of Delray Beach finds as follows. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not generally applicable to other land structures or buildings subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slasher? Yes. Alex Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. <clears throat> Robert Cohen? Yes. Two, that literal interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other parties subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slusher? Yes. Alex Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dimitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Three, that the special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from actions of the applicant. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alex Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dimitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Four, the granting of the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other land structures and buildings under the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slasher? Yes. 
Helic Hayes absent. Brenda Cullinan. Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu. Yes. Robert Cohen. Yes. I apologize. I lost my spot. <laughs> Do you recall e. that that was number five? Okay. That the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify granting the variance. That the variance is the minimum variance that will make possible a reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Mike Miles. Yes. Jesse Slosser. Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan. Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu. Yes. Robert Cohen. Yes. And six, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenna Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Hey, the board has made positive findings that all six elements are met pursuant to LDR section 2.4.7 D7. All decisions of the board adjustment are final. At this time, can I get a motion to approve uh, the variance request for file number 2023-051 for 203 Southwest 2nd Street, Unit 1? So, yeah. Pro. Second. So, so. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Schlosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Great. So the Board of Adjustments has approved the variance request for 203 Southwest 2nd Street, Unit 1. Uh, Chair, I'll now begin the board order for 203 Southwest 2nd Street, Unit 2, which is the eastern unit uh, abutting the intersection. This is file number 2023-051 for the June 15, 2023 Board of Adjustments meeting for the address of 203 Southwest 2nd Street, Unit 2. It's consideration of a variance request land development regulation section 4.6.15 G1 to allow a swimming pool to be constructed in the front setback. Pursuant to land development regulation section 2.4.7A5, following consideration of all the evidence and testimony, the Board of Adjustments for the City of Delray Beach finds as follows. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not generally applicable to other land structures or buildings subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Two, that literal interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties subject to the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Three, that the special conditions and circumstances have not resulted from actions of the applicant. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Four, that the granting the variance will not confer onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied to their land structures and buildings under the same zoning. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. <coughs> yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Five, that the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify granting of the variance and that the variance is the minimum variance that will make possible a reasonable use of land building or structure. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. And six, that the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of existing regulations, will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Okay, the board has made positive findings for all six elements in order to grant a variance. Pursuant to LDR section 2.2.47, all decisions of the Board of Adjustment are final. I please get a motion to approve variance request for file number 2023-051 for 203 Southwest 2nd Street, Unit 2. So not salute again. Mike motion, yes. Second. Mike Miles? Yes. Jesse Slosser? Yes. Alec Hayes is absent. Brenda Cullinan? Yes. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Great. Uh, both variance requests associated with Unit 1 and Unit 2 of 203 Southwest 2nd Street for file number 2023 051 have been approved. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Welcome to Del Rey. Thank you. For next time, next time is a triplex. Right. Where are you originally from? Thank you. 
Does staff have any additional comments to be made relative to the meeting or other actions of the board? Yes, I, I do. You know what? Um, I have a problem. My grandson is graduating and going off to college, mm -hmm. and I actually just made the plane reservation yesterday. Okay. Is there any way? I know it's the 20th. Um, um, I'll be gone from the 19th to the 29th. It, there's no way that we can make it. Yeah, because I really. I'm out of town as well on the. 20th. And you're out of town. Can okay. Well, um, we we have seven members. Well, we have six. Well, our board is supposed to have seven members, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but without uh, two of you, since we currently only have six, that would not provide a quorum. But um, we'll work internally to uh, to figure out the date, and um, and then we'll. I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's okay. It happens. You're you're allowed to take a vacation. Um, well, it's not a vacation. It's a graduation. Yes. Well, <laughs> you're allowed to celebrate. <laughs> So um, we'll contact the board member who is not here tonight, and then if the other three of you can just also uh, keep us up to date on your um, on your plan. So if we are not able to have July twentieth, then we would have August tenth, um, which would be. Oh wait, do we yeah. do first? It's usually first. the first. I'm sorry. Uh, August 3rd. Yes, uh, I'm new at this uh, BOA liaison stuff since your prior liaison um, actually retired. Um, but so it would be August 3rd, so the first Thursday of August. So we would have to look at that. But um, we'll, we'll work internally and confirm the date with you. Um, does anybody have any issues with August 3rd? No. Not that I know of. No. Yeah, I just want to comment. We do <clears throat> have one for August 3rd here, anyhow. There is one. Well, that's that's the anticipated schedule, okay. but the schedule usually just relies on whether or not we have items pending for oh, okay. your review. Um, and since we do have two items that we're, we were anticipating for July 20th, um, it looks like we would have to okay. move I those just, two. I, I, just, I just rechecked my city email. Sorry. I did not get an email get... about the July 20th uh, mm -hmm. schedule. I didn't either. Okay. That's okay. Well, no worries. We'll, um, we'll get things scheduled. Um, Okay, so we'll look at that then. And then, um, just as, as you just mentioned, just keep us up to date on, on, on plans. So the, the anticipated schedule is always the first Thursday of the month mm -hmm. uh, with the third Thursday of the month as um, oh. the option if the first Thursday does not work out. Um, it, we try to just keep it consistent so that you have a more predictable calendar and then we do as well mm -hmm. internally. Um, but because of holidays and whatnot, we had to adjust um, the uh, July meeting and I guess tonight as well. But um, we'll, we'll be in touch with you then okay. about the, the next meeting and those items. Thank you. Excuse me. Are so, we still going to be members? Mm -hmm. uh, my term expires the end of August. I know that. I, mean, I believe. I think Vlad end of August, right? Okay. okay. Probably right. So yeah. board board appointments um, typically happen during the summer, and the uh, if if you are up for reappointment, yeah. Um, then I think you'll you'll be contacted to be on that list. If you're not up for reappointment, and you're termed out, then your term would end August thirty first. Because the any new appointments would begin September first. Any um, but I believe the city clerk's office would be contacting you about that if they haven't already. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, piggyback off of that um, for two two things. One, uh, do continue to monitor your email. Um, you know, we'll work internally, but I suspect that we'll try to choose an alternate date for that July 20th meeting since we know at this point that um, unless city commission appoints a new member before July 20th, uh, we, we, we don't have quorum. So... Um, Keep an eye on your emails. Uh, we try not to go two months uh, without, if an application is pending. If there's no application, obviously it's not a concern. 
Um, and that kind of transitions into uh, additional information that we wanted to provide you regarding absences and attendance and how it's calculated, um, just to make sure that everybody's clear. So the the old ordinance um, used to call it abandonment of office, and that was modified towards the end of last year to be inadequate attendance. Um, it didn't change much, but it does. Uh, it previously, that number was a fixed number. So it was, I believe it was either three consecutive three. absences it was three, yeah. or um, I think five absences over um, a 12 month period. Yeah. So that number has changed to be a percentage. So now if you've missed more than 30% over the last 12 months, that will trigger um, inadequate attendance and, and removal from your position on the board. Right. And that number 30% can be a lot easier to achieve when the board only meets um, every so often versus, you know, five meetings. You know, this board may only meet five times a year, depending on the number of applications. Um, so please be aware that, that the 30% is the new mark, not necessarily a certain number of meetings itself. Uh, the three consecutive meetings is still applicable. Um, but with this board, I think you'll probably hit 30% if you miss three consecutive meetings before that would be an issue. Um, and the way they we determine an absence now, uh, so July 20th is a great example. If that was a regularly scheduled meeting and um, two members say they can't appear and that eliminates the ability to have quorum, those two members are actually going to be um, tallied with an absence because it was those members' inability to make the meeting that led to no quorum. Any member that could make it, even though there's no meeting, would not be given an absence. Um, the other thing we're working on internally, and I'm not sure, I don't think it's been adopted yet, it probably will, but uh, a mandatory response to your board liaison at least 48 hours before the meeting on uh, whether you'll be able to attend or not. Because, for instance, if two of you have just said, today I'm not going to make it, and a third member has another pre planned vacation but never says anything, you know, that member doesn't get an absence because they weren't, didn't divulge their inability to be there because there was already no quorum. So we're trying to make it fair um, for everyone. And the 48 hours, we understand an emergency might happen, an accident. There's not like an extra penalty if you said, I'm going to be there and something happens. But it just helps us plan accordingly. And, and you see some applications, you know, they have attorneys or engineers or architects coming from out of state. Um, that that may need to make alternate travel arrangements or cancel them so um, just trying to make sure all the boards understand the way that we're going to review absences how they apply what the new rule is with 30 percent if you ever have any questions on your current attendance record or if you're getting close to an issue uh, contact your board liaison which would be miss miller in this instance could this july uh, the one that's for the 20 could it be moved like up so the land development regulations only state that the Board of Adjustment shall meet once per month in the evening. It doesn't okay. necessarily say it has to be a Thursday or the first or third Thursday. It's what we typically utilize. So that I'm there's, just saying for this one yeah, month. So that there's routine. Yeah. Um, that's something I think that we'll, staff will, will discuss or look at to see what if anything could or should be done right so that might be something that we could look at it's just to keep in mind um, development services department also manages the historic preservation okay. board site plan review and appearance board planning and zoning board and we have many items that also go to the city of commission course. so um, in in juggling everything um, it is hard to make that type of an adjustment. Yeah, well, you we all just said we could make office yeah. there, but, all of us. You know, yeah. we, we can always look at something if it is, um, if it's necessary. Necessary, okay. Right, but, you know, we, we try to stick to a predictable calendar. Yeah, because it's difficult everybody. to coordinate seven board member schedules, and then you add two applicants who may have agents and owners or, Absolutely, you yeah. know, and that's then, another thing, you, yeah. then you're, right. <laughs> you're coordinating a lot. So we, we do our best if yes. we... We preemptively know there may be an issue, but um, it, it obviously can be difficult. And then that's just the people in this room. Remember, IT is typically here beforehand as well. Um, you know, and then the city attorney's office on top right. of development and services. So staff, it's, yeah, yeah, we we of course um, 
our personal lives live and live and die by <laughs> our, <laughs> our board calendars and due dates and everything. So. I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Right. Yeah. But keep an eye you. on your your email because that will be how we'll communicate if if an adjustment can be made or we look at an adjustment okay thank you i have a question mr bennett so um for the findings of the the facts mm -hmm. right the six criteria that seems to me to come, like put the cart before the horse um because what happens if one of the findings one of us doesn't find if we only have six people if i and then we get to the point where it's moved for approval or denial it would seem like a movement for a approval first and then find the facts afterwards would make more sense to me but I, I'm curious well so you can the, what, the board can only approve an application if it determines that those six criteria are met so, so if one of them's not met it's an automatic denial that would be my advice to the board I mean I can't make an actual motion and yeah. I can't second the motion and I don't get to vote when the motion is called mm -hmm. but yes if if and you can have a situation where you know, one board member didn't find for item two, another board member didn't find for item five, and but those both board members think the, there's a way that the motion could pass. And I, it's not it's more complicated in the way I just said it, but there has been a situation in the past where five members um, said yes to an item and one member said no and that member still wants to vote no because technically they did not find that all six elements have been met correct mm -hmm. but the board as a whole has determined that the five the six elements were met and so my advice to the board is that that motion really needs to follow its findings on those six elements mm -hmm. so that's why we do the elements first so if the board it, it would create a, a probably a bigger issue if five members said we find all six elements but five members didn't vote to approve the item because you've basically said I think it meets all the criteria but we're not going to grant it but that's how it could be done right now right if we find everything technically like I said you know the board can make a motion and second a motion my advice to the board is that that motion has to reflect its findings that mm -hmm. we do before we make a motion okay so it's not hey let's move to approve this item go through the findings one of the findings doesn't hit quorum the motion fails and then we have to remove is that so I understand kind of the process mm -hmm. that you're working through in your head yeah um, I think to me it makes more sense to go through the elements because once you've made the motion and it's seconded you just you vote on that motion okay and so if the board were to do the motion first and then I in essence polled the board members to make sure they all agree that the findings were met mm -hmm. you know we'd be in a situation where we probably have to to reconsider that motion and, and set it aside and then make the appropriate motion based on the findings okay so it this way is actually the horse pulling the cart so so if we you know, if somebody doesn't find one of the findings adequate, it goes back to board discussion before a motion is made. It doesn't just automatically get denied, correct? Mm. Do I explain well, your now kind of? So, well, I'm just curious. I'm just curious if that situation. Right. No, it's up, so it's person, not a. While we're not in front of an applicant, right? Or, it's know. it's a good question because there are times where the board will communicate that it is finds lacking an element before we go through the order and the applicant may request that the board postpone mm -hmm. and they may make modifications and come back or mm -hmm. present more evidence to show you why that element was met. Um, like at the cross and rebuttal process? So, so it's probably better to have that discussion before we start going through all of the findings. Yes, yeah, right? I, if, if any board member believes that an element is lacking, I think it would be worthwhile to express that opinion before we begin the board order so that the applicant understands okay. the the risk or that there's a portion of what they're requesting that may not be the minimal variance mm -hmm. that could that could address okay. the issue so fair enough um so uh, but i'm i'm just reading the board order and you're making findings as i do it mm -hmm. um i i'll be honest i don't know exactly the answer but at that point a motion has not been made we're making findings mm -hmm. so there may still be the opportunity for for the applicant to request a postponement um, 
I was working it through in my head, and I'd rather yeah. do it now when nobody's on, you know, yeah. in the hot seat sure, than sure. Right. we're going back and forth for half an hour right. trying to figure I, it out. So I do think it's problematic to go through all the findings and then to find out that your application is not going to pass and then ask to postpone. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think that'd be prudent. Right, I don't think it'd be appropriate. Really should happen before you start right taking actions. Correct. Okay. I kind of related to this. It would make me feel better if you can explain to me a little better the C item because I'm always having a problem with that one. Okay. So that's the, right. the way it put in some other words that I can feel good about it because when it says the special condition and circumstances have not resulted from actions of the applicant, to me it's a little like an oxymoron thing because that's that's where those conditions, like with the fire station. Okay? Mm-hmm. So they, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't talk specific project, but uh, it looks to me that so it's for, obvious. That's why they occurred right. the problem because they created the problem, really. Well, and that that item, that element is probably one of the more difficult for the right. board to have to deal with, at least in my opinion, okay. um, and especially if you're dealing with new construction, because um, there may be certain things. I mean, you've seen an application, for instance, where it is new construction, right. but it's right of way dedication that occurred mm-hmm. after the plans have been drafted, sure. submitted, and right before they issue a sure. permit, they go, oh, "Wait, you have to." You have to dedicate five feet of your front right. yard, and now all of a sudden, your compliant plan sure. becomes non-compliant. Sure. So even new construction, there could be a nuance. But yes, I mean some items, um, that element, you have to decide whether whether what happened or not is is an action of the applicant. And even this um, last item with the duplex, right? I mean it's new construction, but you. The applicant, I think, did a good job trying to explain to you that even though it's new construction, right. you have this awkward corner right. lot where it should be this side, but because right. of mm-hmm. a label that right. the city has given a different road, right. um, so which has so, changed over time, etc. Yeah. No, yeah. that one I but, understood. But, but if if I can just to comment on that, to me, in looking at the criteria actions, um, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly how it's ordered. The one special conditions or circumstances have not resulted from ap- actions of the applicant. Well, they're proposing to build a duplex as opposed to a single family. So, yes, it meets the minimum requirements for a duplex, but if they were building a single family, they right. would have different setbacks. Right. They would The Southwest 2nd Street would still be considered the front regardless of the use, right. but you wouldn't have as large of a setback mm-hmm. along, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. there would be some adjustments there. Right. You wouldn't have two driveways. So in that case, the applicant right. chose... A, a duplex for the lot, but yeah. you know, it's just it's just part of the balance. You are on the receiving end of making that decision, <laughs> yeah, well, I yeah. and I can I help you as best me. I can yeah. if you have questions. But well, ultimately, I, I, that's I, I for the board to determine. Actions or actions, actions are not plans. Actions are actions. You have to do something. And the only case that I've seen that we had where the applicant did make changes to the property, putting up an addition, converting a a property from a garage to something else. And that was was their action. And the one that's finally where the uh, addition was put on, installed by the applicant improperly, and that's what caused the problem. He chose to put a structure where it wasn't supposed to be. Well, that's not the circumstances, but that's a special condition. The special condition is you put a building in a space where it wasn't supposed to be. Right. That was your action. Right. Now you caused You're the problem before yourself. Before requesting a variance? Yeah, so maybe he, yeah, yeah, he, 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 he requested re-trace. a variance yeah. after the fact. Sure. After no, that, that, sure. yeah, that might be legal, huh? something for us to digest. Yes. If there's a distinction yes. between a decision and an action mm-hmm. and how that's treated in the code, I, I suspect that there's not a definition in Appendix A that will help us. But um, there are different areas in the code that give us some guidance on how we should read into right. definitions. Yeah. And if it's an issue in the future, hopefully we'll, we'll yeah, the have other ones I was, looked oh, into the, that. They the had a plan to do it, and all of a sudden they're required to give back five feet to the city. Mm-hmm. 
Well, yeah, that's the okay. applicant had nothing to do yeah, exactly. with well, that's, that request being if, made to give if, back five feet. If I can, just to be clear, yeah. right-of-way dedications aren't just all of a sudden. They're part of our comprehensive plan yeah. that is adopted yeah. and part of our land development regulations. Yeah. The so, public is on notice that those things will be required if they redevelop. Right. Now, whether yeah. they're personally aware of them or not... Well, but know, they're, that's they're, another issue. Their you know, hired right? professionals should know um, to but at there least there have been some cases it. where the project was well along in the planning stage, and then the requirement came along kind of after well, the fact. Well, I wouldn't and, say you know, that the requirement came along. The requirement existed from the moment they began their planning. It's just that maybe they didn't have personal knowledge of it, and unlike, unlike an item that would go to SPRAB, you have yeah. a technical advisory committee that reviews these before mm -hmm. they get to the board. You're dealing with single family homes and duplexes that generally speaking are not reviewed until they're submitted for permit. Yeah. So right. that unfortunately maybe they they get further into the process before yeah. they this get is, feedback that yeah. you know places them. We don't deal with easements per se, but I have a personal example of a case where I personally ran into an issue of uh, uh, an easement had been granted, in this case it was to build a sidewalk, where there was none. It was, the easement was not recorded for a long time by the county. And all of a sudden these guys showed up to start digging this sidewalk. He said, that's, you, that's not your land. Oh yes it is. What do you mean? Well there's an easement for it. And it turned out the easement hadn't been recorded yet. So when the title search was done, it was not known. As it, my attorney also said, that was the only time in her whole career where she actually filed a claim against a title insurance company. <laughs> no, that's probably the right action. But yeah, yeah but I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. things like that can occur. It, it takes a long time for some stuff to show up in the public record Sometimes. sometime, and all of a sudden, oh, yeah. bang, you know, you're 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 mm -hmm. you're in trouble. All right. Well, thank everybody very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no other all. questions. Well, the meeting yeah, is adjourned. Adjourned. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Diane, I just need to do something about these minutes. Right? <laughs> All right. Diane, say, I'm going to go home. Have a good night. Have a good night. Candy water. I'm a candy freak. Take the water, too. No, I don't want the water. I have some water.